here. Hello, Hello everybody. Hey. Welcome to this lovely interview with the authors of Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. I am surrounded by some amazing Valkyries, but you know who I am. So let's just jump into introductions. We're going to go across the screen. I'm going to ask you all to tell us a couple things. Introduce yourselves. Give us the short version of how you got into tabletop role-playing games and then zoom us to the day that you got like the email and like what your reaction was. Um, and uh, let's just uh, go uh, left to right down the screen. Uh, so Celeste, we'll start with you. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Next up is Michaela. <laughs> Hello, I am not Celeste, I'm Michaela. Uh, pronouns say she and um wait what was the question <laughs> introduce yourself what's the short version of how you got into tabletop role playing okay. games okay gotcha I have our questions too now caught up so I got started doing tabletop role playing games with a group of friends in a small town and it was a terrible Dungeons and Dragons group <laughs> and so from there I left that group and found a new community on Twitter which is where I pretty much live now. And uh, I run mostly online games. And I also run, when coronavirus is not happening, live games in Portland, Oregon at a pop-up tavern called Orcs, Orcs, Orcs. So I went I from there that. to writing. Yeah, what Zoom us to the day you got like, I'm guessing an email ask, like asking if you'd be interested. What was your reaction? How did you react? Yeah, so I got asked to work on this project through a Twitter message from Chris Perkins. And I didn't have my tweet notifications on, like I don't like notification pop-ups. So it was actually like a couple days later that I was like, I have an unread message in my inbox. And then I was like, from Chris Perkins? <laughs> oh my God, I left him on unread? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was horrifying to me personally. <laughs> Oh, no. But I was in couple and he was super nice and um, we talked about it and I was like, yeah, I'll do this. And um, the next day I got another DM from Kate Welch and she was like, so I heard that you're like in the group now for writing. So can like oh, I, I snag you first and do this other project? So uh, <laughs> wow. I kind of got dragged dragged into a head first right before we started working on Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. That's amazing and so exciting. And also sorry for making you realize that's like- <laughs> Oh, it was, it was really <laughs> funny in retrospect. But at the time I it was a ball of anxiety. Like what if he doesn't like me because I didn't read his message? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Did not happen for uh... the record. <laughs> <laughs> Let's zigzag back to Celeste. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, I'm so used to running things behind the scene that I had my microphone turned off. Um, uh, hey, I'm Celeste Conowich, one of one of your authors of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, uh, and uh, I got started playing, writing, loving D and D when I was a very small child. Um, basically, my dad had like moved out, and my mom was ready to just like get rid of all his crap. Like, didn't want anything to do with him anymore. Um, and so I was allowed to go through his boxes of stuff, and I found all these awesome like old A D and D books and like notes and character sheets he had like filled in and played with in this college group. And I just fell in love from there. And my entire goal in life has been to write a Dungeons and Dragons book. And uh, hello. <laughs> wow, I'm here. Um, I When I got the email, I think I, it was also a Twitter message from Chris Perkins saying, hey, what's your email? And I was like, I'm sorry. What? What's happening? <laughs> what's happening right now? Um, and I think it was a few days late. I was like, it's my email. I'm sorry. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then... It was a few days later. I was in the middle of a game, and I got an email from Chris, and I uh, opened it up. Well, I saw Chris Perkins emailed me, and I was like, hold up. I had to stop the whole game, and I read it, and then I just screamed into the microphone. Um, and, <laughs> and everybody's like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't think I can tell you. Um, <laughs> right? So that was, a, that was a, 
a big emotion day. Uh, and then I printed out the email and I kept reading it to yeah. believe it had happened. Oh, um, for, I hope like, you have it like on a wall. Yeah, it was on my desk. I like I folded it and refolded it and like had it living under my little like computer stand for a super long time just to make sure it was real. Because I'm a pretty active dreamer. I don't know. Um, you ever have those dreams where you're like, I definitely did that homework assignment and then you didn't or, you know. Maybe you're like, I, I got this off. No, no I'm I reliving some anxiety. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll turn it off. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my story. That's that's why I'm here. Yeah, Morgan, what about you? Oh, um, so I'm Morgan. Um, I, I use they, them pronouns. And um, I got started with D&D. &D. Um, okay, I don't want to try and get too much of a sad story, but I was in foster care and um, one of the uh, people who worked at the group home I was at, hi, cat. Um, hello, oh. this, is, this is my cat. His, his name is a Sarah Rack. Um, we call him Ace for short. Um, so that's another oh. introduction for you. Uh, anyways, um, I was in foster care. Uh, one of the people who worked at the group home was really into D and D, and I was a nerd child, unlike the other girls. So I got invited to be the only girl in a D and D game there, and it was an awful experience. But even after the D and D game fell apart, I kept reading the books until I finally moved to San Francisco um, to be back with my family when I was seventeen, and uh, joined up with Adventures League. Uh, as far as the like rhyme and getting involved with that, my experience was different from the rest of the group because I was actually at Wizards of the Coast doing an internship over the summer and I was on the Magic the Gathering side of things actually. Um, and I decided to like email Chris Perkins and just be like, hi, I'm here for an internship and I really like D&D. Can we have lunch and just like talk about D and D, and so we had lunch and I expressed like just my interest in working on D and D in the future. And I'm just like, at the time I was like this plucky upstart, you know, 23 year old, I'm 24 now. Um, and, uh, you know, he was just like, yeah, we can have an interview and I'll go over some of the things that I might think might be good for you. And then we went and had a meeting and then he was like, okay, so which one do you want? Which assignment do you want? And I'm like, okay making it happen good for you yeah. <laughs> that's awesome uh and uh, what about you oh god uh i am i'm Anne, and i am the, uh, the european delege the delegation for this writing team uh i am the <laughs> norse expert it's not i'm not uh <laughs> so. she's my norse expert <laughs> yeah and uh, I started D and D a few years back when I had a really, really bad spell of my mental health and just was inside for many, many weeks. And then I found streaming where people were streaming D and D and stuff like that. And I'd also watched Stranger Things where they mentioned it, so I was like, "Oh, this is on my radar now." And you can make fantasy worlds for things and stuff with your friends. That sounds like a very good idea. So I went and did that with some friends, and eventually. That spiraled a bit out of control, ended with me writing an entire campaign setting for my custom world and releasing it on the internet and then just continuing in that vein of things where I'm like, oh, this would be fun to have in my own game. Let's just make, spend too much time making something that others can use and then putting it online. Um, and my story about getting into this uh, writing for this project is almost exactly the same as Michaela's, where I got a Twitter DM from Chris Perkins. <laughs> and I, because of the time difference, I was about to go to sleep. So I was just like lying in bed and then my phone went Zzz, and I'm like, Chris, Chris, Chris Perkins, Chris Perkins <laughs> is, is DMing me on Twitter. What? <laughs> so I had to kind of just figure out, first of all, if this was a prank. It wasn't. And I, and he was like, oh, do you want to work on this project? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And it wasn't that specific because it was still just kind of in the confines of a Twitter DM. So I thought right up until we got like the first like proper information that it would just be some sort of thing like writing a short adventure for DM skills or some other thing like that. 
and when I actually got the information, oh yeah, this is like for one of the main hardcovers in 2020. I had I was under my bed for like half an hour and just like, okay, this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is not happening. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Ashley, tell us hi. about yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm Ashley. Um, I got into d d somewhat late um, in the sense that I've only really been a part of this whole community since I think like 2016. Um, but I've had a lifelong passion for fantasy and science fiction and, and also writing. Like I had a writing career before I started doing all this awesome stuff. Um, and once I started playing D&D, I realized that there was this whole creator community where you could publish your own adventure content. And I was like, yes, I'm going to take this as seriously and academically as possible and establish a plan for becoming a D&D narrative designer um, because I have zero chill. And so um, <laughs> I was, and I really did. I mean, I, I feel like I've done nothing else for the past like three years of my life. Um, and once I realized that that could be a pathway to eventually writing for one of the official books that became like kind of my North star. Um, of course, other projects became just as like exciting to me, of course, like the workshop and other things that I've been a part of, but um, that was still kind of like, that was my goal. I was going to find a way to do that by, I was going to say by any means necessary. That sounds <laughs> way too intense, but I'm uh -uh. Really intense anyway. So um, yeah. Um, well, yes. done, actually. <laughs> Uh, this is the way my brain works. It's like always like, how can we make fun things harder for ourselves? <laughs> um, and I think I believe that I also got a Twitter DM from Chris, but I'm I actually am not 100% sure. But I remember the email because he I think had asked for my email or something like that. And then so I was kind of waiting to get like excited until I got the like official email. And um, yeah, he was basically like, would you be interested in doing this? And I was like, uh, tentatively, yes. I mean, because I'm like a snob, I guess. But I really like wanted to make sure that the project, like the the themes of the book and like the just the general, like, I guess, ideas behind the book were something that I was truly excited by. Um, not because I was trying to be like picky. I just wanted to make sure that I felt like I could really contribute something like from my heart to the project. And when I got the email with kind of the overview about the book, I was like, I'm 100% in. So um, yeah, and I remember that I was at the gym and I was on a treadmill and I was trying to excitedly text my husband and then I ended up like dropping my phone. And so like my headphone came unplugged and it was like, blasting my like podcast to the whole gym and it was like this whole thing <laughs> um, so that was fun so I went from having like being very like serious and like contained to being like just a hot mess at the gym and everyone was like what is happening yeah that's I'm, hilarious yeah. <laughs> oh Ashley yeah. last but certainly not least we have Hannah Hi guys. Um, so I first kind of came into playing D and D when I was a kid. My uncle was super into AD and D and would share with us all of his campaign shenanigans and all of the insane things that they were doing. And I thought that was just the bee's knees. So that's kind of where I started. Um, when my husband and I got together like seven or eight years ago, we started playing a lot together. And so we've kind of done a roller coaster of that together and exploring beyond D and D. The day that I got the the Twitter DM, which it seems like we all got these insane Twitter DM stories. <laughs> um, so I was, I think it came in on a Friday, and I had my daughter the following Tuesday. So I got this Twitter DM from Chris Bergens. It's like, hey, we think you should write for us. And I was like, <laughs> not next week. <laughs> and then Vinny was like, oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. It's a few months out. And I was like, oh, no, no problem, homie. I'm down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me just have a human first and then I'll write so like, your book. <laughs> I like when I got the DM, you got to guys got to think about this. I'm like nine and a half months pregnant. And I'm like, I get this DM and I start sobbing. And I tell Corey, I'm like, we're going to have to bring my computer to the 
husband. <laughs> and he's like, no, you're not. Like, you don't understand. There's going to be time. Like, he's not asking you to write something next week. And then Chris clarified. Um, but yeah, so I uh, got that. I'll never forget that. Like, I was in absolute terror, not about having my child, but because I was like, how am I going to write this book while, or do whatever he was going to ask me to do? I had no idea at that point. It could have just been like, come up with a list of ways to die. And um that would have been fine <laughs> just, i just didn't know how i was gonna do that while i was hopped up on like you know morphine <laughs> so yeah um before we get to our next question i've noticed some extra friends have been showing up on the overlay i think it has something to do with donations <gasps> what? And every five dollars we <laughs> add a new friend um, oh, another no. one just showed up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, weird. Are you doing this test? That's weird. We will get to them in a second. Hey, yeah, but I do what? want to talk about Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. <laughs> um, so um, I guess whoever wants to jump in on this question, um, tell us. For those who missed the D&D Live announce, uh, don't know where you've been, but uh, someone tell us what are the plots and themes of this book as we know now? What information is out there? Oh, okay, I'll don't go. all jump in at once. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scary question. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start calling on people. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'll 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 spare people that. Um, <laughs> if anybody is familiar with the Crystal Shard book series, uh, super popular. You know, RA post Drizzt. Um, you're like in about a 200 years post Drizzt kind of society. Icewind Dale is a very rural region. And they have um, basically now found themselves in a uh, maybe a perpetual winter darknessy thing, and that is the entirety of our book is about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty mm -hmm. succinct. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, please feel free to fill in gaps. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> what's really there's cool? a goat, a lot of coats, a lot of oh, goats. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> No, go for it. I'm I'm trying to find out where all these goats are coming from. So maybe you should um, take the questions. Uh, yeah. So like it's it's like the setting is this kind of eternal winter that's going on, but there's it's very like kind of like there is this overarching plot of like kind of like solving this problem, but there's a lot of at the same time it's also this kind of like exploratory book where like you get to just experience Icewind Dale which I think is really cool um so like there's a lot of information on like the 10 towns and like other places that are like super cool that I can't wait for you guys to check out is there anything else you all can share with us I know everyone it's tough because everyone's still under NDA the book isn't out yet so we're all being it's careful yeah, I think it, so. it was revealed that it's like sorry. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> like that it's a very uh, it's it's a horror adventure mostly, which ties in very well with this idea of the eternal winter and darkness and frosting and all the artwork that's been out is people completely bundled up so you can't see the people you're talking to and you're kind of isolated even in the little towns and everything and you're just it's you versus the elements, which is really just the most terrifying for of all really especially if you're familiar with how the climate actually is it's, it's so deadly at that point so it's you are in a hostile environment facing people whose intentions you can't read and don't know and you feel paranoia at who you're supposed to be trusting and isolated from a lot of safety and warmth and that's really what the essence of the uh, adventure was and what we were given as kind of instructions uh, to get into our riding and then and then goats happened and <laughs> we kind yeah, of steered, steered away from the direction can it. someone please tell me what the deal with the goats is because i've noticed I even Morgan, on twitter so i vote for her to uh, okay about it, sorry i will i will i will explain the goats okay so um without revealing too much details one of my assignments um kind of just had like a bullet point list of like different encounters that had like one sentence or one word things to describe that encounter, like no explanation. And one of them was just like, okay, this is going to happen. And then this is going to happen. And then there was just one sentence that was just mountain goats. And I'm like, how am I going to make mountain goats cool? <laughs> and I tried. I really
really tried my best to make mountain goats cool. And so I sent the rough draft to the group chat that we all had, which was amazing and a supportive experience and stuff like that, that we'll probably get into later. And then for some reason, all of these wonderful humans in this group chat were just like, this was so cool. You know what my favorite part was? The goats. It was the goats. You know what? I want to put goats in my in my group. And then there was a bunch of goat puns. I, I remember there was like something like Baldur's goat was a thing that we were oh, saying. No. Oh, yeah. Um, Curse of goat and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Goat of annihilation. Uh, <laughs> it, it was a it was a whole thing. And um, it became this this thing where we were going to try and challenge Chris Burke and, to, uh, and see how many goats we could actually get in the book and I like I was working in the office at the time and I basically kind of like went up to him and uh, to his desk and I'm like I'm really really sorry and he's like no I've kind of embraced it I started adding <laughs> extra goats into it <laughs> I'm just like all right you did this is what I did um and I like I can't say too much, but there, there was the one line that made everything happen, which was, um, a hostile goat cannot be silenced. I have no idea if that line actually made it into the book, but that is a rule that you should all follow. Talk about yes. horror. Yeah. <laughs> what, yes, what the I really scary was, themes are the goats. <laughs> yeah, the goats, just constant barrage of goats. <laughs> Like what I thought was the most was the most fun was when you came in with that, oh there's goats in it, and we were all, oh that's so cool, we love goats. And then it became a thing like oh as a joke. Oh, should we try to put goats in all our sections? Yeah, we should try to put goats in all our sections. <laughs> and then when we were kind of asking each other for advice, in many cases it wasn't even like, okay, how am I gonna make this work? How do I get to this plot point? It's like, how am I gonna get goats involved in this section? <laughs> <laughs> Because I can't think, think of anything. Oh my goodness. So you touched on this already, but I'm wondering, I saw on Twitter that you have like a little group emblem. You call yourselves the Valkyries. It sounds like you've all really bonded through this experience. So tell me, what was the process of working together like? Um, and especially on um, your first like hardcover adventure together. Um, and uh, everyone's like so shy about talking over <laughs> each other. Uh, uh, so Ashley, oh, do you want to start? Yeah. Um, sure. So I will say that like when, and this, this wasn't my first project with Wizards of the Coast, but I still, this is the first project of this nature. And so I was definitely like kind of in the dark about how the process works of putting together teams. And so we had no idea who else was going to be working on this book until we got like a group email like I think a couple of weeks after we had all signed on to the project. And so from there, we kind of connected with, I think each other just on our own. Cause we're like, oh, like we see all the, these names that we recognize. Um, and then I think like, I feel like our group chat happened somewhat organically but we all kind of like had the same idea. We're like, okay, here's some people that we think are cool. Um, we should start like a private group chat. So it was very much just like, we know that we need a support network to do this big project because it's a pretty high profile project. Um, I think most of us were new to this, this a project of this magnitude. Um, and then I feel like we, we bonded like pretty, like quickly, if not like immediately. Um, and I feel like our group has always been just like extremely supportive of each other. We just shared like insecurities about some of the things we were writing, um, clarification, like ideas, just like general brainstorming and also just like general life support. Because like during this process, like, you know, things, real life happens and it was nice to just like have a community of awesome writers to just be open and honest with. But um, yeah, I feel like that was kind of the process, unless I'm misremembering. I feel like we early on were like, we need a group name, um, which is probably something that I, I probably declared because again, <laughs> you're a chill. I'm like, we need to be well branded. Um, well, that we, was, yeah. yeah, at first we were just the Valkyries. And then when yeah. the goat things happened, we actually became the Valkyries goats. Yes, so. that is, that's an important <laughs> distinguishment. Yeah, um, we evolved. Yeah, I think what was so amazing about this process, I mean, it's it's terrifying to write 
a book for Wizards of the Coast. And uh, I just remember like thinking, God, I'm so glad I'm here, but I'm so scared. I don't know what's happening. And like, because <laughs> all of these people here are all such talented writers and creators um, that it was like definitely an instinct for me to be like, hi, please help me. What's up? Like you, you all helped me like with formatting. You all helped me with ideas. Like I, I could not have done this without the kind of support and collaboration that I think is honestly really unique um, for a lot of projects. I work, I've worked on a few group design efforts and uh, none of them have even come close to the level of support I think we foster just through fun and friendship and then also just having an open space to to learn and to grow with each other and to get through this incredibly harrowing um, <laughs> experience. I mean, because, you know, yeah. having to deal with like imposter syndrome and like the fear of like this, what we're working on is going to be in front of so many people and, you know, everyone is going to have opinions about it. Obviously, they're not all going to be good. Um, um, so having a core group of people now uh, through that, I think, is is incredible. Um, I couldn't have done this without all of you. And thank you. Thank you yeah. all so much. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> I think it was really what made the difference for me between just like having teammates and really becoming friends with all of you is that uh, when we first started the Twitter group, I think most of us had been following most of the other people on Twitter already so we're like oh my god this like celebrity <laughs> <laughs> and the, so I personally I was like oh my gosh I'm the youngest one here I don't have as much experience like as a professional in this industry and then I was like I gotta be cool I gotta like <laughs> know what I'm doing and then probably a couple days later I was like okay actually I'm freaking out and I'm dying <laughs> And Anne also started screaming back at me. <laughs> so then it, we broke the ice. Oh, and wow. <laughs> oh, there it uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful. I wouldn't um, have traded it for anything. I know that, like, for me, I was like, suddenly added to this group chat after there was like an email of like more of like a breakdown of like how the process was going to work. And then Chris. Perkins was just like, oh, and this is more again. She's an intern. She's going to help you out. Um, uh, and um, they, like, uh, Ashley added me to the group, I think. And I was just like, for me, like, I didn't write anything for DMs Guild. This was my first time ever doing anything like this that was, like, not, like, an official, like, like not that was official in any way like and and like everything else I've done was just like homebrew home stuff and so I'm just sitting here and I'm like oh my gosh all these people were like chosen because they're like really cool and stuff and I'm just like this kid who just like walked up to Chris Perkins and was like you know like hey put me on your book please and 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 like and like oh my god I am way in way over my head and then everyone was really cool and they made me feel really welcome and I feel like I've grown so much as a creator I kept being worried about what my life was going to be like after Wizards if I was going to be able to continue doing this um and you know I'm no longer working at Wizards now and I feel confident that I can continue into this industry and that's in no small part because of the Valkyries group Morgan really fast I do not ever want to hear you doubt that you didn't deserve to be there because you did from the beginning. No, for real, so for like, real. like you, you were part of this group from the beginning. So don't, don't ever think that you were like, you shouldn't have been at the table because you totally deserved to be at the table. Thank you. Yeah, I, re I remember when we invited you, like, I think actually I was the one who ran into the group and I was, I was terrified because, oh, this is the person who was like, whistles of the ghost. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you worked there like you were the of, of the cool ones of which we are all obviously very cool yeah, yeah. like you were cool because yeah you were like so I yeah I'm just echoing up what everyone else said that like I feel like we are all very much equals it doesn't matter what contributions we've like ha it doesn't it just doesn't matter like we all brought really cool and special things to the table and that's what yeah. made this process like so awesome yeah, I know. I think it was, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I just talk too much. No, no, we all talk too much or too little. It's, <laughs> it depends on the situation. But <laughs> but I think really the, the thing that was so magical about the group chat is that we joined joined the chat was like, oh, so we should kind of like talk, right? Because we're <laughs> writing together. 
and we were all just crazily standing each other quietly like staring like i'm such a huge fan but i don't want to be weird <laughs> <laughs> it's like and I, I was a fan of pretty much everyone on the team so i'm like act cool act cool and then morgan just I'm like act cool <laughs> and it's like and it's it, it kind of became this thing where we all realized a lot at the same time that we were all freaking out and nervous and really really excited just to be working with each other and it's like oh my god yes and then it just became this whole other thing and that was really really awesome to experience yeah i i remember at one point we were like talking like maybe we should get like a like a teams chat organized by wizards and stuff like that that way like we can actually like talk to chris and stuff and and like we actually like went through the whole process of getting bill to make it and then we never used it because we were like no i don't want i don't want chris to hear the things that we are saying this is oh a special God. place this is our special friendship place yeah, yeah. he's gonna be yeah. like so do you guys actually work or do you just yeah, share goat you know? memes <laughs> goat, work, goat memes i work okay yeah <laughs> I am um, searching all of these goats very and putting them in the overlay. It's work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing Arl's work, uh, Celeste. Yeah. <laughs> made oh, yes. That's you. important. Uh, <laughs> that's Arl's unofficial fourth form is goat. It's goat. <laughs> um, is that what the ram horns are about? Secret, <laughs> a secret also no. goat. Oh, secret. <laughs> secret, also secret also goat. goat. Um, uh, so. One of the things that I also remember is there was this, uh, you know, we, we keep talking about like getting together and hanging out and stuff. And we've done a couple of video calls and stuff. Um, it's been hard because, you know, we don't all live in the same area. You know, Michaela's in Portland and Anne is overseas. Yeah, um, it's like equivalently far away from Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Short drive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But M Michaela was in town at one point and me and Celeste and Michaela got together and there's some really goofy selfies from that day. And oh it was God. just such a great experience to just like hang out with y'all. And then like I met Hannah at a, uh, and Ashley actually, I think at a party. Um, it was actually the, the Baldur's Gate release party. And um, that was like super fun. And so I was starting to like get to know you all. And it was like, really cool to put the the faces and the personalities to the names and like uh celeste i thought you were too crazy cool for me but then i figured out you were a weirdo so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> I think at some point it was like you or Michaela who said like was was Chris just looking for like you know like uh like kind of like dumpster fires of, of women and femme presenting people for this book <laughs> oh my god the secret is that that's every human the secret yeah that's us all <laughs> Um, before I move on to the next question I just want to double check Hannah if you had anything you wanted to add about working with the group Good. So the group, like, what I think is so cool about it is that we transitioned so quickly um, from like, hey guys, nice to work on this project with you to like, what is our life? Because we're all like <laughs> writing on this book now and like, what is this even? And to, I got my assignment. I don't got a lot to work with here. So how do I write this and making that happen? And then going from uh, the outline that we had to developing an actual story and a plot and a book, like we did that and we're, we did that with each other. Um, and I think everything about this book has been a labor of love and no part just because of the fact that we were supportive of each other the whole time every time we had a section or anything that we needed help with, like we didn't hesitate to come and say like, is this stupid? Does this work? Um, you know, is this too mean? Auto TPK, I don't know. <laughs> and um, that's, that's the kind of support level uh, that we needed that I don't know if we would have gotten if we weren't working so hard to maintain this group. And this is like a special place for us to just kind of exist and be goofy and off the wall and creative. I'm glad you all had each other. <laughs> Knowing what you know now about um, the process and working on the project, what advice would you, you give yourself at 
if you could go back in time and tell yourself something right when you were starting? Celeste, I'm gonna call on you. Yeah, um, on you. I think. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I I I feel like this whole process. I was really intimidated to be writing this book. Um, so the whole there were a lot of steps along the way where I was like, okay, well maybe I shouldn't do it like that. I'll just be. I'll I'll make the careful choice. I'll make the careful choice. Like you know, going through the whole process, and then I would get feedback, and it was like no, you shouldn't have done that. I'm like, okay, never do the careful choice. Um, You know, do the bold choice. Uh, Because it's like, you know, learning that, like, that's why I was there, you know, because of my style and because of who I was. Um, I wasn't there to fulfill some other kind of expectation. So right from the get-go, I would have encouraged myself to believe in myself and my voice uh, and what it was and just go with that and commit to that. I think I think there I was I was still kind of finding my style and everything and so in that you know it, it was a navigation really to get to telling things the way I wanted to and writing the elements that I wanted to um, which it, we eventually got there but if I, I think if I had started there it would have been a lot less um, meandering <laughs> of a path. Sometimes you got to meander, though. Sometimes you do. But, yeah. like, if you believe in, you know, where your feet are going uh, and trust your gut sometimes, um, that's that's the better choice. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that really speaks to the imposter syndrome that a lot of us felt starting out. Just, like, knowing that we were all there in great company with all these other incredible accomplished storytellers, but feeling like, oh, I don't have the like technique that I want to have in order to execute this project. And uh, I think for me, probably for everyone involved, really, it took a little while to get to the point where you're like, okay, I have like a plan and a rhythm and like, here's how I do the thing. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, it was new and it was exciting and we did eventually get there so I don't feel like we should be too disappointed about having a rocky start (laughs) like I I feel exactly the same way as as Celeste and Michaela it's like it's when you get involved in really any sort of big project that you've been hired on to make something for if you're nervous uh, and you aren't really confident in yourself yet, even though you're very skilled and talented, because obviously you got the job, so you must yeah. have some skills to get there, right? But you can still feel like you don't deserve to be there, or you don't, you feel like, why was I chosen, not all these other people? Why was I here? So you try to make your voice as amiable to the person who hired you as possible. Right. And in when doing that, it becomes kind of bland and kind of becomes like nothing because you're not using your voice you're not using your ideas you're trying to as Celeste say like playing it safe and being like oh this is this they're probably gonna like this this is very standard D, but like you don't want standard D. <laughs> you want your DD. that's why you got on the project that's what that's what your voice can kind of do and what only you can do is figure out your ideas and what you think is interesting and kind of playing with that and then maybe you're getting told like can you change this a bit and you're like Sure, I'll make it weirder now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a goat on it. <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. Uh, because we've got maybe about 10 minutes left, I want to layer in a similar question, but a different question. Um, so if someone's listening right now who has the same dream that you all did, uh, to, uh, I want to write a book for Wizards of the Coast, what advice would you give to a creator who wants to be where you are today? Writer advice, eh? Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, sorry to jump in hope it's okay Um, I think that making work that really excites and inspires you that is with your creative vision is always a great place to start Um, I think that there is kind of this misunderstanding about how like working for these companies works like you do have to follow some direction that they give you but they look for people who have a unique creative voice like everyone here has like we were brought on because we each have a different perspective um so if you can make work consistently share your work with the world don't sit on projects for too long just put things out there and see what happens develop as a writer get feedback um and try things that are a little different um make sure that you do study 
the industry, study the rule set that you want to write for. Um, I think the mix of like having this like kind of um, unique creative vision mixed with having some technical skills will really serve you well because it'll also open you up to all sorts of projects in the future. Um, but also I do want to say that like this doesn't have to be your goal. Um, this, I think we all came to this book in completely different paths, but I think what we all share is just like passion for what we do. And we do take it seriously and professionally, even though of course we have fun while we're doing it. Um, but I think if, if that is your goal, you do have to treat it like a job opportunity. And so, you know, set a plan and a project scope to help you get to that point. Um, but there's so many avenues to doing this and there's so many creator programs. I mean, DMs Guild is an awesome place to start. Um, that's my personal starting place for this whole thing. And um, yeah, I don't think there's one kind of clear path, but. Yeah, I also want to add to that, like it's everything you said is absolutely right, but I didn't have that to that point before coming into this project. So like, don't let like a lack of experience or a lack of like the technical knowledge or something stop you from uh, jumping into projects that you maybe fully don't understand or like don't feel like you can do because uh, other people believe that you can do it, right? And you have a whole group of people to support you in it. So just put, keep putting yourself out there and like trying because you don't um, know until you try. So for me, um, I obviously came at this from a different angle, but you know, I, I applied to an internship that I never expected to get because I wasn't technically qualified. It was for college students and I wasn't in college at the time. Um, and so what I would say is work on your portfolio, like really like let that shine, let your actual work shine and don't be afraid to apply for positions that you're quote, not experienced enough for. And, you know, like, and this doesn't just go for studio jobs because there's a lot of like people looking for collaborators and they're like, you know, like, have you published something on DMs Guild? And you can be like, no, but here is some stuff I've done at home. And this is like why I can do this project because, you know, like, for me, it was super beneficial to work on a collaborative project before I start doing something on my own. And I definitely, if you can have that experience, if that's the experience you want, I recommend it. I would also say um, make sure to be a, a, a clear and uplifting voice um, to those around you. I think a huge part of this, I mean, I, I spent uh, many years in this community running Venture Maidens and like getting to meet people and work with other people. So I think by the time this project rolled around, I had a reputation as someone who is easy to work with, um, someone who, you know, would get the work done. Um, and if you continue to be a voice that celebrates other writers um, instead of tearing them down, if you celebrate the work of others, the DMs Guild products, the shows, the everything, you know, so if you're you are that positive voice and that person who is interested in building community that gets noticed um all the people around you notice and you know what it it comes up in conversations like hey have you seen this person's work or like let's share this let's collaborate on things um building those blocks with other people um investing in that that community that spirit i think that's the fastest way to get involved in projects like this because you have to you have to be on the map and you will be on the map if you're, you know, a big negative, scary voice and people will know to avoid you. Or you will be on the map for being an awesome, like supportive, easy to work with person who turns in projects on time and gets things done. Um, it's it feels like a big community sometimes, but actually it's a very, very small one. Um, so your actions are seen uh, and by lots of people. Um, so build your brand, build a positive brand, um, and, and you'll be shocked, um, how many opportunities start opening themselves up, uh, when you start helping out others. Absolutely. Oh, Hannah, go ahead. I'll just add to that. Don't be afraid to be unabashedly who you are yeah. because that's what people are going to be drawn to. Mm -hmm. Unapologetically exist, uh, as Am who I? you are. <laughs> 
Um, that is some amazing and varied uh, advice. Uh, from some equally amazing human beings. I am selfishly so excited. I got to chat with you all uh, today and share in your excitement. Um, as we kind of wrap up uh, this panel, let's go back through, we'll do the same order as when we started um, and do some outros. Feel free to tell folks what you're working on and where they can find you um, on the internet. Uh, so Celeste, we will really start with you this time. Yes, my mic's on. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Celeste Conwich. Um, I do a lot of producing on this channel right here, Venture Maidens. Uh, you can check out all the live streams we do, our podcast, Venture Maidens, um, which I'm the dungeon master for. Uh, if you want to check out all my writing projects and everything else, you can always find me at CelesteConowich.com. It's a catalog of everything. Or follow me on Twitter at CConowich. I'm currently writing a lot of stuff for the DMs Guild right now. So um, there's some fun Guild Adept stuff coming down the pipe. So stay tuned. And thank you all for being here. And for getting us past 6,000. The what? goats yeah. worked. Yeah. Yes. So many yes. goats. So many goats. <laughs> um, thank you, Celeste. I'm Akela. Um, I currently have a Twitch stream that's on hiatus. So for right now, you can check out the stuff that I do on Twitter, McBoots42. It's probably a lot of Black Lives Matter and Animal Crossing right now, but there will be content too. It's not good, it's probably. And um, you can check out my portfolio of stuff that I am growing and expanding on Um And I guess that's it for me for now. You can probably soon find me advertising some more DM for hire stuff for family groups and kids. So very cool. Thank you, Michaela. Morgan. Hi. Um, so I recently changed my Twitter handle. So if you want to go find me now, it's um, at Mori, M-O-R-R-I, lore mother. Um, and I am... Uh, doing some work uh, on some personal projects right now that I'm really excited about. Um, I'm doing something in collaboration with um, a, a young creator friend of mine, and we're trying to raise money for um, uh, foster kids. Um, and because that's where this all started for me. And uh, so I'm Really excited to get that off the ground. It's still super early in the works, so be on the lookout for that. And um, I also worked on the Theros book, so if you haven't checked that out, uh, check it out and pay per particular attention to the section on divine assistance. Wink, wink. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. <laughs> Anne? Uh, yes, uh, I can be found being sort of funny on Twitter at Anne of Many Names. And that's also uh, my website, uh, anneofmanynames.com, where my portfolio is and where you can contact me about work and stuff. I sometimes have time to, to do things that are funny. It's not always because I'm very busy all the time. Uh, I usually, I have a, a, a series I'm working on, still working on called Monster Loot, where I'm cutting up all the monsters appearing in the official hardcover books so that you can make them into stews and wear their body parts as armor. It's very, very nice. Um, and I am working on a big project right now that is kind of a sort of rewrite of the monster manual. And according to math, it will be probably over 300 pages. I don't know why I do this to myself. <laughs> but... <laughs> You're a hero. <laughs> yeah, so I will. you will hear more about that in like six months when... <laughs> <laughs> when I have more to show, but yeah. Great, thank you, Anne. Ashley. Yeah, thank you for having me on this panel. This was awesome. I think everyone here is just completely amazing. Um, you can find my work at my website, scribemind.com. I'm on Twitter at Ashley and H Warren. Don't tweet Ashley at Ashley Warren because that is someone else. And I don't think that they are involved with D&D &D at all. So I'm sure they got a lot of confusing tweets. Oh, no. um, yeah, there's a few things I want to mention. One is that if you are interested in learning how to write your own adventures, I'm the director of the RPG Writer Workshop and our summer 2020 session starts uh, this coming week um, to learn how to write your first adventure. It doesn't have to be for d d it can be for any rule set. Um, that's just one, as we mentioned, one avenue to getting started with all of this. And we just try to impart information that we've uh, learned from various you know, mistakes and experiences. Um, so that's uh, rpgwriterworkshop.com. 
Um, also, I recently worked on some other RPG books, including one called Hecna with Hit Point Press. It's a fun, dark, spooky carnival setting. Uh, the playtest documents are available now if you go to uh, the Dice of Many, or the Deck of Many, excuse me. Um, yeah, whatever Hit Point Press's Twitter account is. Um, and also another project I worked on called Legend Lore with Onyx Pax Publishing is finishing its Kickstarter this week. Um, so that's a cool book because you can play as yourself in a fictional place, um, which is fun. And there's, okay, there's too many other things to talk about. Just go to my website. Um, <laughs> and yeah, feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thank you, Ashley. Hannah. I'll make this quick. Um... You can find me on Twitter at Stop That Old Woman, or I have a website that has a lot to do with my fiction writing that's not TTRPG related, but it has some of that on there at hhcarlin.com. Thank you, Valkyries, every single one of you for joining us and sharing a little bit of your joy and what you've learned uh, with us as we talked about Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Can't wait for to see that book. Get in my hands. Yes. Congratulations, all of you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. Shall Thank we all you. finger dance? Yeah, as we yeah, as let's we finger dance as we transition. Out. Okay.